Good morning, I'm back again with encouraging words on how to live victoriously. These are revelations that I've known for years and that I put into practice. It's not theory, it's good doctrine, but it's also good practice. My topic this morning is don't neglect your well, your well of joy. Don't neglect your well. When Jesus was traveling south from Galilee, Having listened to his father's instructions, which he always followed, he took a group of his disciples through Samaria, John chapter 4 and verse 4. He arrived at a town called Sica. He sent his disciples to buy food and sat down on the edge of the local well about midday. He was thirsty, hungry and tired. And when a Samaritan woman came to the well, he asked her for some water. She was very surprised, as it wasn't the custom for a Jew to speak to a Samaritan. Jesus' reply to her surprise was to say, well, if she knew who it was who was asking her for water, she could have asked him for water. Well, she thought, well, you haven't got a bucket, you can't get the water, the well is deep, how can you give me water? And then Jesus revealed to her that it wasn't ordinary water that he would be able to give her. It would be living water, which would be like a well of water on the inside of her, springing up to give her everlasting life. Well, she never heard of that before. This Samaritan woman said, uh, you know, I want this water. And uh, so she, she questioned him further, and he was able to go back and go delve into her history. She had been married, oh no, she had had five uh, men and uh, she wasn't living with her husband at the time. And the result was a, a complete village was converted and set on fire. Revival fires came to that village because Jesus asked her the question, can I have a drink of water? What a conversation. Now, Jesus was, of course, talking about the Holy Spirit, living water, it refers to the Holy Spirit. And uh, he also made reference to this in the feast at Jerusalem in John chapter 7. On the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood, cried out with a loud voice, Anyone who's thirsty, let him come to me. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow springs and rivers of living water. He was, of course, speaking of the Spirit. Now, as Christians, when we were born again, the Holy Spirit came to live in our spirit as a holy guest. That's why sometimes he's referred to as a holy ghost. By the way, I forgot to give you that reference. It was John 7, 37. So the Holy Spirit is inside us as a holy guest. He is a well of water inside us. Now, the Apostle Paul was a very good encourager. And he spoke to his spiritual son regularly and he sent letters. And in his first letter, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul said, Do not neglect the gift which is in you, that special inward endowment uh, which was imparted to you by the Holy Spirit. Don't neglect it. It's inside. So what my title is today is Don't Neglect the well that's inside. If you're baptised with the Holy Spirit, you have a source of joy, a well of joy in your spirit. Proverbs 20 and verse 5 says that a man of understanding will draw it out. Don't leave it there. Don't neglect it. Draw it out. Isaiah 12 says, therefore with joy draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day you'll say, praise the Lord. So easy to forget that the well of joy is there. Now, if we neglect that well, we forget to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the way you draw the water out of the well. You draw on that source of joy. And when you do that, just spend some time. I did this recently on the, on the day of Pentecost, which was recently. A, a group of our local people were here and I started speaking in tongues. And I was, I was away, I was, I was happy camper. I was speaking in tongues, I was laughing 
and joyful because that well had sprung forth. On the day of Pentecost years ago, not this year, the one we celebrated not a few days ago, but on the real day of Pentecost, the, the disciples had such joy, they were full of laughter, and the crowds in Jerusalem thought these men are drunk. That's Acts chapter 2 and verse 13. The Holy Spirit that brings joy sometimes brings it out in hearty laughter. And uh, why is this joy so important? Now, here's the last little key today. Nehemiah, who led the returning Jews back to Jerusalem from Babylon to build again the walls of the city, gives us a secret in his book. He wrote from personal experience in Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. He said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when we draw water, when we draw the Holy Spirit, when we draw joy out of our well of joy, then we're strengthened. Our spirit is strengthened. Our faith is renewed. We enjoy intimacy with our Heavenly Father. Our hearts are merry. And this is like medicine to our soul. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Nasty demons who try to remind us of the things of the past. People who've hurt us. It's like rubbish in a fountain. Turn the water on, all the rubbish gets blown out. Remember, this is how you keep yourself in the love of God. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Draw water from that well. This is Jude 19 and 20. Keep yourself in the love of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. With joy in your heart, circumstances will stop affecting you and you will dominate the atmosphere by your joy. It will affect those around you. And instead of having an unhappy heart, the joy of the Lord will be there and that will knock away, demolish the feeling of heaviness. I'll look at this again on another uh, teaching, Isaiah 61, verse 3. That's what we'll talk about next, the oil of joy. So this is the well of joy. Don't neglect it. Next time I'll be talking about the oil of joy. God bless you. See you soon. Bye-bye.